This video, we're going to be talking about the Marauders. Before we get started, be sure that you're following me over at my other forms of social media, such as Twitter. My Twitter is at Eric D. July. Again, that's Eric D. July. You can also hit up my website www.ericdjuly.com for some more information. You can also listen to my podcast over there as well. If you're into gaming, be sure to hit me up over at Twitch, twitch.tv slash youngripper59. So it's the same channel name as my YouTube. And of course, if you like videos like this, which are more so thought provoking, I dive into some storylines, give you a good visual, be sure to visit patreon.com slash Eric D. July, I believe it's Eric D. July, patreon.com slash Eric D. July. You get a vlog request, and in those sorts of vlog requests, I dive into maybe some subject matters such as this, depending on what tier you are in terms of a patron. Like I said, today we're discussing Marauders. This is actually the variant um, edition of issue number one of Marauders. Now, that name may be familiar to a lot of you guys. This isn't necessarily the same team or even the same idea. I'll go in depth into that in a little bit, but just keep that in mind when you think Marauders. If you're familiar with the X-Men, you may be thinking something totally different. We'll talk about that. But this issue, of course, is piggybacking off of a lot of what has taken place regarding the X-Men following the House of X, Powers of X, that whole storyline and such. Now you're starting to see other X-Men stories pop up up now in this issue there's some interesting things that pop off with kitty pride that we're going to be focusing on with this video that's the whole reason i wanted to upload it because i thought it captured something very very cool so without further ado let's get into it in order to understand what's going on with the x-men you'll need to read house and powers of x if you just start from the marauders or something like that you will be incredibly confused as to what's going on even if you start with X-Men issue number one, you'll be confused. So you want to start there in order to understand the details of what is taking place. Go read House and Powers of X. I won't go into everything, but I will say that the most important thing to know is that the mutants have established their own nation state by the name of Krakoa. This is for any and all mutants, even the ones that have historically been villains. As an example, Apocalypse sits on the council of of the nation state this is not the first marauders team when you consider marvel's history but the marauders have historically been villains ironically enough they used to actually be assassins led by mr sinister and he currently is on the krakoan council however as it stands he has nothing to do with his new team this story starts with Kitty Pride, who, of course, you should know as the x-man that has the power of intangibility there are these portals that are all around the world that lead to Krakoa and all mutants are able to walk through them. However, she walked right into a wall and she couldn't walk through a portal. This obviously surprised the other X-Men like Nightcrawler and Storm. They're going to keep looking into this as to why she can't cross um, into the portal. So Kitty really decides to take the long way um, to the island by traveling on a boat alongside Lockheed, you know, her little alien dragon. Iceman greets her as she arrives, and it turns out that she's also carrying a bunch of random items for Wolverine that he asked her to fetch. Random stuff from ribs to whiskey. She apparently wants to talk to Iceman about an offer, but he asked her to hold that thought because he wants to see why there's no traffic coming through this portal that's near them. This is where we learn that this offer comes from Emma Frost. Now, Emma is part of this council as well with the nation state of Krakoa, and she handles, let's say, the more illegal side of things. Now, Emma wants Kitty to head the waters and really deal with matters of the Hellfire Trading Company. If you've read the other stories, House of X, Powers of X, you know that part of Krakoa being recognized as the sovereign nation is really due to this miracle drug that only they can produce. And they're trading with these other nations. Basically, they're saying you recognize us. As a sovereign nation, you will then get this miracle drug that can cure everything from, you know, cancers and all sorts of stuff. But they want a hand in the black market as well. And Emma wants Kitty to handle those shipments when it comes to this miracle drug. She also understands that not everybody is on board with Krakoa and countries have blocked off entrances to portals for other mutants. So you can think 
of the fact that there's other people that just that are mutants that maybe want to get to Kakor, they can't really go through these portals. This is where Kitty and her team is supposed to come in and transport them, let's say, the long way. When Iceman comes back, we learn that the portal he went through leads to Russia or part of Russia, and they aren't with this whole Kakor thing. They even attacked Iceman. Not being able to go back through that portal, Kitty decides that they should take a cell to address this this problem. So she is joined by Iceman, Storm, OG Pyro, again, Reed, House and Powers of X to know and really learn why all of the previously dead mutants, I'm talking mutants that have been dead for decades, they're really back alive. Arriving on Russia, though, is where we see some of the best art that I've seen really capturing the powers of Kitty Pride. Considering that she has the power of intangibility, you think that would make for some really great scenes, especially when she's fighting other humans. She's basically untouchable. But in my honest opinion, this useful power has not always been shown as such. Oftentimes, it's really neglected, but not here. She's able to easily go through this entire armed team and we get about three pages of her doing some pretty cool things, even going through this tank to simply eliminate uh, the driver. I don't expect her to be shown as overpowered. And I'm not even saying that she's overpowered, though. You can make that argument. I'm just saying that this book does a great job of displaying her capabilities among a group of adversaries. Oh, and she shot a dude in the leg with his own gun. She's getting kind of cutthroat. We end this issue with Kitty asking Storm to be a part of this team, and she agrees so as long as she doesn't have to deal with Emma. She actually was asked by Emma for this role that Kitty is about to fill, but she declined. She don't really mess with Emma Frost like that. It would also seem that Iceman and Pyro are with it, too. Now, Bishop was in this book dealing with this issue in Taiwan, so I'd imagine that he'll be a part of this group as well along the way. Certainly, when you consider what we were shown at the beginning of this issue, we are probably going to get Wolverine and Nightcrawler with the team as well. And that's going to do it. We're seeing a lot of new stories that are popping up out of the entire X-Men deal, House of X, Powers of X, this nation state of Krakoa, you have Marauders, uh, X-Force just came out as well, uh, Excalibur, a lot of different things that are going on with the X-Men, and a lot of those books are, are, are good, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. I do love the direction that they're going with the X-Men. Uh, some of the classic characters have been brought back, considering how they are able to bring back some of the characters um, and that makes for some interesting things not only are we seeing them and it almost feels funky because we haven't seen some of these characters in a long time but you know this isn't something they're going to be able to keep keep up with because it's almost a get out of jail free card if they can just keep constantly bringing back mutants um, you know, any of them that die so for the time being they can actually do that but I don't think that that's going to last that long if you like videos like this, be sure to visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash Eric D. July, and you get vlog requests and just requests in general videos that I will do, diving into a topic that you would maybe want me to dive into. That's the point of it, depending on what tier that you, um, you are your patron of, or what tier you belong to in terms of becoming a patron. So be sure to visit that, patreon.com slash Eric Eric D. July. Man, there's a lot coming up on this channel in terms of the X-Men, so be sure to keep it locked.